Welcome to episode 27 of the Animorphs Read Along broadcast. Today we're talking about book 23, The Pretender. I've said it before and I'll say it again, every Tobias book is a gem, and I think um, because he has fewer books, there's never sort of a wasted Tobias book. Every single one is going to be really intensely character focused. Um, because we just don't have that many opportunities to be inside Tobias's head. Tobias puts on a really good front of just like this tough kid who's coping with being a bird really well. He cracks jokes about it, he never complains. So it's easy to forget that Tobias's life sucks. Like he is constantly on the verge of like an existential crisis, feeling super lonely. Like Tobias has a hard time and this book is definitely a reminder of that. There's sort of three main storylines going on in this book. One is the other hawk encroaching on Tobias's territory and Tobias's inability to hunt. He's actually starting to go hungry. The second storyline is that of the baby hork Bajir who has wandered off from the colony ready to be captured by humans or by Yerks um, and the Animorphs have to find this little hork Bajir named Beck. The third storyline is Tobias's real life as a human kind of rearing its head for the first time um, in the entire series, which is that someone is looking for him. There's a lawyer who's supposed to read a statement to him, and a cousin who's claiming to want to adopt him, and offering to buy us something that he's never had, a family and a home. I think the juxtaposition of these storylines is really interesting. We have, like, sort of the super surreal bizarreness of Tobias's life. He's trying to hunt down an alien to protect it from other aliens versus like this very human, very normal situation. For Tobias, the unusual has become normal and this kind of human problem is so foreign to him and so confusing for him. And it's really funny when he goes in to see the lawyer and he's like, do you want something to drink? And Tobias is like, oh god, what should I have to drink? I'd like a Coke! It's really funny. But the whole situation is also very emotional. Tobias is almost afraid to hope that this could really be for real. The chance for him to have warmth and safety and love, that's something that's never even been possible for him. Rachel and Tobias's romantic connection becomes more explicit in this book. She says, what am I supposed to do, Tobias? I'm a girl. You're a bird. This is way past Romeo and Juliet. We can't hold hands, Tobias. We can't dance. We can't go to a movie together. Rachel clearly wants something with Tobias, but she's right. They can't really have that when he's a bird. And I think Rachel is a big part of why, in the end, he decides to go for it. Rachel really makes him believe that this is a good idea. They've investigated and investigated this cousin, and she seems to be legit. And so Tobias is like, y you know what? Yeah. After they clear up all this Beck stuff, get the work Bajir back to the colony, He's going to become human and he's going to do something for himself for once. Tobias has sacrificed enough and um, if he wants to quit, I don't think anyone would hold it against him. In the end, of course, the cousin is not a cousin, but Visser 3 and Morph. And when Tobias finds this out, he just breaks. He says, I hadn't realized till that moment how much this hope had meant for me. A home. A family. Not for you, Tobias, you idiot, you fool. I hate you, I hate you. I want you to die. <sighs> It's really sad. Elfangor, using the Elemist's help, had left a letter for Tobias. So Tobias finally gets to find out that Elfangor was his father, which means like Axis, his uncle, which is super cool. And Elfangor's letter says, I was part of something larger than myself. I had my duty. There was a great evil I had to fight. There were lives I had to try and save. Elfangor's like, I didn't want to walk away from you, but I had to do what was right. And this, in the end, is what gives Tobias the strength to keep going. Um, and keep fighting. He's like, you know what? I'll do my duty. Visser 3 says this really weird thing about Elfangor. I knew your father. We were, shall we say, on the opposite sides of certain issues. But he was no fool. Suddenly Visser 3 smiled. It was a faraway smile, like he was remembering something from long ago. Prince Elfangor was no fool, and the galaxy will not soon see his like again. Like, this from the guy who ate Elfangor, there's this weird kind of, like, friendly respect almost coming from Visser 3, which is not what I would have expected at all. I also like how he was like, we were on opposite sides of certain issues. Like, they were buddies that just fought about, like, politics. Okay. In the end, they're able to rescue Beck, and Tobias is finally able to hunt again. He was feeling so guilty about killing a baby rabbit, but he knows that if he kills the mother, then all the babies will die. So what he does in the end is he kills the mother and acquires her 
and then morphs into the mother rabbit to take care of the babies. So it's kind of an interesting compromise, but it really represents, I guess, both sides of Tobias, the human and the hawk. This is without a doubt a sad book, but I think it's fitting because Tobias lives a sad life, and it's important not to forget just how much he's sacrificed. But I think learning that his father is Elfangor is going to renew his strength, and I also think that despite the complicated nature of his relationship with Rachel, she is a great source of support and joy in his life. So Tobias is going to keep going and he's going to be okay. So yeah, those are all my thoughts about Anwar's number 23, The Pretender. The next book is book number 24, The Suspicion, and it is super hilarious. If you want to keep up with this read-along, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, and I will see you on Monday.